business owners, business leaders, entrepreneurs, I need you to listen to me, especially if you don't have time. Why? Because on today's edition of Bootstrapping Business and Ministry, we're going to get into part one on how you can save time producing content for social media. What's going on, everybody? Glenn P. Brooks Jr. here back again for another Bootstrapping Business and Ministry. And guys, this is episode 30. Uh, I can't believe we've been going 30 strong weeks uh, that's better than a half of a year that we've been consistent with dropping this kind of content. And today I'm going to talk about some things that's going to hopefully save you some time. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. If you are an entrepreneur, here's what I know you know. You have little time, right? You, you're doing it all. If you are a business owner, you're doing the most. And one of the things that I have found to be particularly critical is when I strategize ways of being able to create content in a batch kind of a way, and I'm going to get into that, uh, to help you save time. So we're going to take you into a masterclass, actually. It's a lunch and learn that we do with our MAPS masterclass every Wednesday. We call it We All Need Some Help Wednesday. And it's where I invite people who are going through that existing cohort and some of our alumni to come through and just let's lunch and learn about something that we're all struggling with. And I've noticed, particularly in our community, people really struggling with being able to produce content and really being able to do it in a timely way so that they can show up consistently. Stick around to the end because I'm going to give you some information on how you can stay connected with us. But right now, I want to take you into this lunch and learn that I did previously. Five time-saving social media content creation tips, part one. It's a mouthful. Stay tuned. So number one is develop a posting strategy. When I say a posting strategy, what do I mean? You first have to decide what platform are you going to master? What platform will you master? That has everything to do with your target audience. It has everything to do with your target client. Where are they? And then the other part of it is it has everything to do with who you are. If you are doing business to business, LinkedIn is your platform. I don't care what you say. If you are a writer, a blogger type, a person that doesn't like to be on camera, LinkedIn is the platform you should be mastering, period. And the reason why is because the platform was built for that, right? If you do not want to shoot video and you do not want to ever go live, then you probably do not want to ever be on YouTube for any reason, unless you're selling products that don't have anything to do with you and you're somehow leveraging YouTube as a store that demonstrates or that shows products. But then IG is a very good platform for that as well. So when I look at Claudine, Claudine as an artist could just de uh, debut simply products all day, every day. And it's going to gain a ridiculous amount of traction because that's what IG was built for. Facebook is a hybrid of a lot of those. You can write. You can do what they call long form post where it is a story and you could post them almost like a blog. You can shoot video schedule it we're going to talk about that or you can go live plat so facebook kind of is a is a is a is a hybrid of all of them but you got to pick a platform everybody's posting strategy will be different the goal is to determine what is it that your audience wants and how do you want to show up and deliver it y'all hear me what is it that your audience wants the reason you know that is because they engage you so when I take a look at my platform, Renee, and I look back at the kind of engagements for you, it might be Instagram, particularly with what Caden's doing. You can tell what people like and what they don't by going and looking at their engagement history. And just ask yourself, which kind of posts are getting the best engagements? Just do more of them. Linda, if you notice that nobody's engaging posts where you write, but everybody's engaging the posts that you go live, there's a hint. You probably should write less. It doesn't mean that your writing isn't good. It just means for whatever reason, the way people connect with you is through speaking. It's when you speak. It doesn't matter. So some people get married to a way of delivering something because that's the only way they think. And so therefore it becomes a thing where they're saying, well, I don't do that. Uh, you got to be careful with that because the question becomes, does that what your customer target client wants? 
So you're going to have to figure out how to be able to deliver what it is that they're looking for. Shri, you got something you want to add really quickly? Yeah, and I just wanted to add the piece too. When you're thinking about what platform you're going to use to reach your audience, you have to be mindful of who your audience is. So like Glenn said, if you're going business to business, you definitely want to use LinkedIn, but consider, you know, who is your target target audience? Who is that group of people? Where do they go? If you're dealing with um, 50 and over, um, uh, if that's your, your audience, you don't want to use Instagram. Um, you may not even really want to use Facebook. You may want to use YouTube because they may pick up on YouTube a little quicker. So you have to know your audience and know where your audience goes. Um, just because you're comfortable with a platform doesn't mean that's where your audience is going to find you. So you're going to have to play with it and figure out exactly where your audience is, where you get the most, you're going to have the largest reach. And that's the primary platform that you um, want to use. One thing oftentimes is that business owners feel like they have to be on every platform. Um, like for us, I'm not, we're not doing TikTok. That's not our audience. I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, we very rarely even use Instagram because that's not really how we reach our clients. It's more so through Facebook and YouTube because um, for us, particularly YouTube, because people go searching for information for relationships and they're going to go to YouTube and search for that type of information. So know where your target audience is and use that platform and focus on just that one. Don't worry about Absolutely. spreading yourself across all the different platforms. Just focus on the one that you know where your audience is and inundate them there because the whole goal is to get visibility, but you want visibility with the people that matter, the people that are your clients or your target clients. Absolutely. And uh, Shannon laughed. She said, no problem, TikTok. See, here's the crazy thing. So for Shannon, because she is a teacher of preschoolers, the truth of the matter is, although TikTok may not be for her, she may find that if she creates a piece of content that is fire, that catches the attention of, say, a, a small child who might be on TikTok watching their bigger brothers uh, or sisters TikTok or whatever, the, the deal is it may pique the interest of a parent that says, what is my kid watching? And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a parent gets clued into Miss Shannon. And all of a sudden, Miss Shannon has the most positive stuff she's ever seen on TikTok. Guess what? TikTok can very easily be a platform for her because she's already going after small children. Now, they're her target audience. They are not her target client. So you her may target. not go on to... Let me let me let me finish that thought, Sheree. You may go on to TikTok for your target audience, Shannon, but you're not necessarily going on to TikTok for your target client. That's fine because at this particular point, that content for you, and I'll just give it to you this way: McDonald's target audience are, are children, but their target client are their parents because their parents are the ones that spend the money. And the reason why they focus on children is because those bad boys grow up to adults that spend money as adults and will drag their what? Children to McDonald's as well. So TikTok would be super huge for McDonald's because that's their target audience. And then eventually it bleeds over into their target audience. Sheree, do me a favor, uh, take some notes and um, bring your questions up at the end because I'm really trying to speed through these things because I want to get to a large piece of Q&A and then bring you on to share some screens and talk practicality about some things. So if you can hold that, that would be super dope. Guys, let me keep going through this because I want to get through this because I'm watching you and even for the people who are watching this by replay. Guys, we're overthinking things because we don't know what to use and that's okay. My goal is to help demystify some things and narrow you down. Just like we talk about the power of the one thing in terms of what is the one thing that you should be doing that makes everything easier or unnecessary. For me, it's, it's killing Facebook. The one thing when it comes to platform for me is to maximize and master Facebook. I have mastered Facebook in terms of its algorithm. And I'm going to help you guys understand what I mean by that. Remember that on most social media platforms, going live is always going to give you the most love when it comes to an algorithm. It will always do that because going live produces engagements. And Renee, every social media platform is set up specifically to get engagements. That's how they sell advertising. 
So I need you to understand why they created their platform the way they did. So when you understand that and you play their game according to their rules, Kofia, you are killing it in the morning with your Kofia, coffee with Kofias because that algorithm of going live is a medium that will generate more views, generally speaking, depend, especially when you're not known, than anything else that you do. And the reason why, it's not because you're dope, it's because the algorithm wants it. So I'll give you an example. Just because I have 4,500 people on my personal page on Facebook doesn't mean that when I go live, all 4,500 will see it. What it does mean is that more people will see it if I go live versus when I put up a video versus when I put up a picture versus when I just write text. The algorithms are set up to win that way. So just understand that when you're posting, I think quite frankly, you can win in each category, but you need to know your audience. So I just need you guys to understand that. Number two, a basic posting strategy, or not number two, this is still number one, but a basic basic posting strategy should include, and I need y'all to understand this, when you're thinking posting, think educational, entertaining, or inspirational. Those are the three categories I want you guys to stay in, and I want you to rotate them as you post. I want you to post something educational, um, entertaining, or um, inspirational. I realized that over the last couple of weeks, I have been posting very little stuff that's just flat out entertaining. And I'm a funny guy, right? I can be really funny. So I just decided I'm on day three of my not doing coffee. I hadn't really been posting it. I said, let me get personal, let me get funny. If I am having a headache, I can make that thing look hilarious. And so I will have a ridiculous amount of traction on something as stupid as I would think as the fact that I'm detoxing from coffee. Who cares, right? The algorithm does because it's gonna produce engagement. People want to be entertained. They don't always wanna be taught to. So as a teacher or a coach, I have to remember that. That's why sometimes, even when I'm talking to you guys, I gotta remember, Glenn, you gotta lighten the load. That's some heavy stuff you're talking about right there. People need a little humor interspersed throughout that to be able to digest some stuff. So I want you to think about that, Kofia, when you are on your lives, I want you to slow your flamingo down a little bit. I can tell that you're trying to get out the door. Your flamingo is on next level. Slow down and wait for people to respond to you. If you ask them, are you ready for number three? Give them time. This is how you give them time. You go back and you recap. So while we're waiting on number threes and the goal is to get them and engage it. Now you're waiting for them to give you a number three. Here's what you will do. You will say, I ain't going nowhere. We're not talking about another thing till y'all do a number three. Cause here's what I know. Y'all trying to get ready for school. You're trying to get ready for work. You are brushing your teeth. I need to know that I'm not just sitting here entertaining you. I, I got something I need to teach you today. And I need to know that you're listening. What that's going to do is train your audience to engage with you. When they do that, the algorithm loves it. The algorithm will go crazy and it will send your stuff through their system, fine. So now in your mind, you're gonna talk for a certain amount of time, always schedule that amount of time and then you protect it. So if it's 30 minutes, it's 20 minutes, then that's what you're gonna give them. But I want you to slow your roll and be more methodical. Now I hope that's really helped you guys. That was a long one point of five tips. On the next session, we're gonna give you a rapid two, three, four, and five uh, in this two-parter on tips that can help you save time when it comes to producing uh, content for social media. I trust that this really helped you. I hope to see you next week.